Sound and logical. Supercell. It's a Netflix series in the UK, predominantly London, concisely South London. But it's called Supercell. Now I thought, I thought that I would, in this title, put 144,000 before it's used to represent 144,000. So we're going to look into this one. Supercell, superheroes. Let's have a review. When five ordinary South Londoners discover that they have extraordinary powers, it's down to the one man to bring them together to save the woman he loves. Interesting. Just like Christ is trying to save the church. But we're going to understand when you start writing and you look at literary work, you can get any story to fit any situation. So I'm doing this on purpose because I know people will quick and run with one bag of prophecy, one bag of Bible this and Bible that. So here is the cast or the crew led by Tossing Cole on bringing an authentic depiction of South London's black experience in the Netflix Black British Sci-Fi. So it's a black British sci-fi. A group of ordinary people from South London unexpectedly develop superpowers with no clear connection between them other than them all being black. Released June the 27th, Netflix Supercell, created by a British rapper, film director and screenwriter, Ratman, stands out for its innovative use of the superhero fiction genre to tell a compelling and propulsive story centered around sickle cell disease, a condition that disproportionately affects black people. They all have a common thing in common, which is they have a trait called sickle cell. And this sickle cell trait they have empowers them to have super special powers and become superheroes. But let's say they're all heroes, some of them are a bit villainous, but nevertheless, they have some power and they become powerful. So, going back to immigrant foundling who became Superman. The superhero genre has often been used as an exploration of what happens when people from variably disenfranchised groups find themselves within unexpected levels of power. Whether the result leads to enhanced altruism or diabolical megalomania is the difference between a hero and a villain. Do they use their powers to help people? Or did they use their powers to get revenge and avenge and kill and do all kinds of wickedness to the people who offended them? Whether the result leads to enhanced altruism, looking after people, saving people, or diabolical megalomania is the difference between a hero and a villain. Not all audiences are so eager to read the subtext, which has led to the recent stories that push the subtext to the surface and the superpowers occasionally to the background. Whether the goal is to make stubborn, pre-existing audiences get the point, like X-Men 97. Interesting. Supercell. Superhero genres. Who do they seem to attract? What target audience loves a good old immigrant story of an immigrant tale that is being marginalised and persecuted unfairly and is somehow miraculously given power by a magical staff to let my people go. <laughs> hey, we're going to get there. So go into the immigrant and found a link who became Superman. Did you know Superman was an immigrant? Superman was an immigrant and he was found on planet Earth and he was raised from humble beginnings. And over time, he had to be in a wilderness to understand how to use his powers for good, altruism, or diabolical, megalomania. But he was an immigrant. He was a citizen of Krypton who was sent 
to earth. Interesting. Regular superhero motif. Let's continue, let's advance, we'll see. So why is Supercell popular? From authentically portraying African culture to depicting the struggles of ordinary people with newfound powers. Supercell captivates audiences with its nuanced storytelling with a 100% critic score on Rotten Tomatoes and rave reviews. Supercell has taken the world, the world by storm. And to be fair, it's, the cinematography is on point. I love that it's representing a particular disenfranchised community. It appeals to me. I like it. It appeals to me on very many sociable factors and representation and all that good stuff. But going back to the immigrant foundling who became Superman, the superhero genre has often been used as an exploration of what happens when people from variably disenfranchised groups find themselves within unexpected levels of power. Just think about that. Let's continue a little bit more. It's going to get interesting. Superhero context and subtext. Origins and power dynamics. Many superheroes like Superman have origins rooted in immigration or being an outsider. This reflects the immigrant experience and the complexities of navigating a new world with newfound abilities. The transition from vulnerability to power often mirrors societal struggles. Is Superman an allegory for immigrants? Superman's simultaneous embodiment of two nationalistic extremes. The Rose Valetian mind and the immigrant body imbued him and his allegory with a nationality crisis. He had an identity crisis. He didn't know who he was anymore. His identity had been stripped from Krypton. He was trying to find out who he really was. Am I a human? Or am I a superman? Or am I a subhuman because I'm not really human like the humans? Who am I? Cried Superman, the immigrant from Krypton. Similar to Moses, he cried, who am I? Am I a Hebrew or am I just a Pharaoh? Or am I a Egyptian or Kemet? I do not know who I am. My identity has been semi-semi-stripped in the Moses myth. Goku, he sent from his country or planet or whatever it was to Earth. He forgot who he was. He's found by an old man. He's taught about Earth and he is coached into being fill in the blank. Then you have Windrush, the Windrush generation. Many people came on the boat or a ship to England or to Europe to help rebuild Europe after the war between the Germans and the Russians and so on and so forth. So many people came from the Commonwealth to be citizens in the empire and to rebuild the empire. They were outcasts. They were seen as inferior stock. They were shunned by most facets of the community that they were brought into. They were lost. They were trying to find their identity. They were trying to assimilate, but still keep where they had came from. You can find a lot of these regular stories or these motifs in superhero stories because superhero stories are based upon immigrants. Why is Superman a refugee? Superman is a hero and a refugee. He was forced to flee from a dying planet called Krypton to Earth, where he was adopted by a Kansas family. After learning strong moral values and discovering his superpowers, Superman stands up for the weak and vulnerable people of the Earth. The reason superhero films gravitate towards particular audiences is because they've always been targeted towards the immigrant, the disenfranchised, those with a nationality crisis. Supercell is an exciting and fresh take on the superhero genre. The show features gripping storylines, dynamic characters, and top-notch special effects. 
supercell has the familiar so it's fresh but it's familiar and sometimes predictable themes or motifs found in in these types of projects including ultra violence moses killed the man who was oppressing his people in the exodus myth egyptian empire is attacked by a deity who hardens his heart so that he can show off his powers and let his people go the immigrants so that they could worship him in peace in the exodus myth but i say exodus myth because exodus is not a unique story and it's not historical i'm showing you why and how these stories resonate and gravitate towards certain people Supercell has the familiar and sometimes predictable themes found in these types of projects, including ultra violence, teamwork, and hardships. Walking around 40 years in the desert, that's some hardship. Teamwork. Okay, we've got our freedom from Pharaoh. Okay, now we're free. What do you want us to do? Well, here's some more laws. And after you get these laws, this is how you deal with slaves. <laughs> motifs, 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 motifs. I've been like letting people know I'm proud. I'm like, yeah. What was it like getting the, uh, you know, the eyes? Oh, it was. The eyes was like a funny thing because when you watch it back, when we were like powering up, I remember everyone was doing like crazy stuff. Then I watched like someone else's rough cut of their powers and stuff, and I was like, raw. I ain't been doing that at all. I've been like <laughs> letting people know I'm proud. I'm like, yeah. But then it was just like, no, you don't need to do that. You can just be normal and then just yeah. like color it in. So now. Nah, if we get the season two, man's going to have it on. All right. So Supercell, 144,000 chosen. You hear a lot of this narrative right now. People are being conditioned. They don't understand how the conditioning works. They don't understand how psychologists work, mentalists work, and how Chatham House works. Now, I hear a lot of this chosen narrative, and I just think, wow, really? Those covenants that God made with them still stand. They have not been replaced by the church, as many of you have been taught. The sons of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob to be the chosen people. And here we get the first taste of it, Jonathan. Not only chosen to eventually bring forth the Messiah, the one who would crush the head of Satan, but here chosen not just to be blessed as, as God's response to Abraham's faith, but actually to be made a blessing to all the families of the earth. They are a chosen people. God chose those people. They are, the Bible says, the apple of God's eye. The apple is the pupil of your eye. Now, I ain't gonna go off on my tangent just yet. Let me finish this little part of the presentation, all right? So Supercell 144,000, not really. Windrush, Civil Rights, Moses, Superman, Goku, and the X-Men all embody immigrant stories rich with themes of resilience, identity, and struggle for acceptance. Their journeys resonate with the experiences of many immigrants, illustrating the universal quest for belonging and the power of community in overcoming adversity. These narratives highlight the strength found in diversity and the importance of one using gifts to advocate the justice and equality. So when we say diversity, diversity within the people to come together to form harmony and fight for justice and this, that and the other. It's a reoccurring motif, man. Moses in a basket. Superman in a capsule. Goku in a capsule. X-Men, disenfranchised people that can't fit into society because they are not regular. They're seen as unique they're seen as scary they're misunderstood they're neglected they're at the back of the queue you can't drink here you must drink there interesting so when we start to bring this stuff home now as i said before the exodus is a story of immigrants which is always used when it comes to political arena and people are trying to get votes they often scapegoat the immigrant every time there's an election year which this year just so happens to be the year of many elections. You'll always hear the immigrant as the scapegoat, demonizing immigrants, oppressing the oppressed. When you start to understand how this, work, this world works and its literary works and all this kind of stuff, it, it makes sense. You understand? If you don't, you're just caught in a cycle of never ending thinking of oppression, oppression, outcast, 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 because that's what they want you to be. If you don't believe me, 
and you think, oh, he's off on a tangent. He just hates us because we're chosen ones. <laughs> Everyone's a chosen one. Brown eye, blue eye. Chosen experiments have been going on for ages. Tutsi and Hutus. Curse of Ham. The curse of Cain. All these things to disenfranchise people and give people an entitlement mentality. Just look at history. All right. So hopefully you've seen or you've con connected some sort of dots in your own head to see how these things play out in real life. But now let me switch it a little bit. Let's just look at this now as we look at it from the religious framework of control as it relates to the Americas. Check out this video. We're going to listen for buzzwords like chosen. <laughs> We're going to listen for buzzwords like um, 144,000. We're going to listen for buzzwords like the Bible and the conditioning that people have been conditioned to with this Bible because the Bible, unfortunately for many who don't want to hear it, it's a book of myths. It's a collation of myths from other places that have been put into this document for particular social, political reasons. All right. Now, let's get into this one. And you think that the people at the top don't know this? You think, oh, they haven't read this part in Revelation about the mark of the beast? They haven't read... Who? It, it, it. Listen, do you know who wrote this book? It's easy to control the world if you go by a script. Those who are like, yeah, I'm not really feeling that script. They're not as predictable as those who follow a script. Case on point. Check out this video. I am the chosen one. The they trumpet. This is God, chosen people, and this is their land. And 144,000 has already been awakened, regaining the memories, and soon to have their powers. When this solar flash hit the cabal, won't know what to do with them. Most importantly, I brought my Bible. Okay? And, you know, it's First Presbyterian Church, Jamaica, and this was written by my mother. You have to understand how the world works, you know. A person who is afraid to challenge their God or to challenge their God of their book, you are still a slave because no God wrote your book. Men were inspired and wrote this book on behalf of God. The only thing God writes is the Ten Commandments, but he couldn't write a book and tell us what it is from what it isn't in this myth. So when you start to get your head out the sand and understand that you're pledging to a flag and pledging to a book and pledging to a God that... When you ask people, who is Jesus' daddy? No one can tell me who Jesus' dad is in the Bible. They say Abba. They say Yahweh. They say Elliot. No one knows who this guy's dad is. For God so loved the world, he gave his own. Who is the God that sent the son to die for you and I in a human sacrifice? No one can tell me his name. They'll just say God. Yahuwah, Yahweh, Yahabashai. What? You'll see, you've got a presentation coming out. Who is Jesus' dad? Because we need to know. Now check this. Going back to this. Has already been awakened. So 144,000 has already been awakened. People are saying that this time now we're living in is the awakening. But I would say no, it's the asleepening. Because if you're, many people were running away from this Bible because they saw the slavery verses and they saw the contradictions and the double speak and the hypocrisy. Then it's like in the last 10, 20 years, a lot of these organizations which are well funded and well purple and well golden, they came to the top of the podium and have been circulating and giving and disseminating information that's made people want to go back to the Bible with more vigor because they they changed the Bible. They changed the characters all to white when it should be black. And everything was just changed because the Maccabee says this. And we've already looked into this exhaustively. We've looked at the translations in the Latin and the Greek, and we've shown you that what it's saying in these newer versions of King James on Holy Bibles is not what it says in the other versions. If you want to check out that, it's called Bible Versions. All Americans need a Bible in their home, and I have many. It's my favorite book. I'm proud to endorse and encourage you to get this Bible. We must make America pray again. When you look up the word pray, I'm telling you, start deciphering the words in this book that's got you in a God spell and it's got you not thinking correctly and objectively. The word pray is precarious for beg. Beg, beg, beg. You beg the Lord, landlord, overlord. It's an elaborate system. But we must make America pray again. Make America pray again. Sound and logical. 